here with uh, Seth from uh, Broken Barrel Whiskey. Uh, super appreciate your uh, invite out here. It's awesome. Get to check out all this great stuff. We went through uh, a tasting of all this stuff. The new California Oak, guys, I tell you, that cast strength and the uh, regular 88 proof is, uh, is yeah. it's some pretty awesome stuff. Right? Thank you. Yeah, we're excited about it. It's not our highest proof uh, and it is purple. But it's cool, I swear. Yeah. <laughs> the color doesn't matter. The, uh, the, no, the, the juice, juice is good. Is, yeah. The juice is there, yeah. No, that's what matters. Uh, it's cool to have the lineup now of all of these with the broken barrel on the front because we've finally gotten over that hump of like the infuse and switching that to broken barrel has sure. been, it feels like forever, but it's only been about eight months. But the process is taking production from uh, Vegas and moving it fully to Kentucky and yeah. now we're working with Jacob Call at uh, Owensboro uh, as they've got OZ Tyler out there and it's he's an he's a mastermind he really is an amazing distiller their facility is like in constant growth mode so when you think about like what how far they've come kind of in the same time frame like we started 2013 14 they started 2014 so to, they've gone to like 125,000 barrels a year they're laying down. I mean, the capacity. Um, it, they've just advanced, even from the last time I was there last May to this time. Uh, amazing growth that I've seen. So it's kind of like a crazy yeah, transformation awesome. and we're undergoing our own transformation becoming, you know, this whiskey company, which is completely separate from our vodka and, and that other brand. So now we've got so much going on here that's exciting. Oh, this is exciting. I love the patching, packaging too. Yeah. It's super cool. It's cool. It's, it's, it looks, it's going to look good on the shelf when they all line up next to each other too. Um, so I got some stuff for you guys today. One more quick thing before, yeah. before we go. Just oh, yeah, do, yeah, do you yeah. want to tell everyone about your process that may not know because you're doing something yeah, different? Yeah, so... Don't call it a mash bill, right? You're doing... Yeah, don't call it a comeback. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, it's, uh, it's unique. So everyone, every whiskey has a mash bill. Um, ours has a little extra thing called an oak bill. Um, we own that term, we trademark it, and the reason is we're the only ones taking the wood and putting it in the whiskey, not just the whiskey into the wood. So we take barrels, you know, ex bourbon, French oak, um, Cabernet for this one, Central Coast Cabernet from California, and we're smashing these barrels up and we're submerging them into the whiskey. So you're getting the inside, the outside, the sides of the staves, the heads, all that are connecting and touching with the whiskey, delivering more oak surface area that has even more uh, of an effect. And you can really taste it on such a young whiskey. You're really getting so much more flavor than you would expect from anything in its age range. Uh, and some of these drink like five, 10 year old whiskeys um, in terms of like complexity, depth, flavor, the richness you know, any harshness that you would find from a younger whiskey that hasn't really fully matured is really balanced out by the fact that you're just leaving these oak staves to kind of soak and submerge into the, the juice of the whiskey, so. Right, right. Awesome. That's how we make it, yeah. It's, it's great. It's yeah. that simple. And, and <laughs> I'm a huge fan of that new, this could be my new. Okay, yeah, favorite. this one. Yeah. So we, we got to try uh, today the regular, 88 proof, 44% uh, California oak, but I happen to have some of this uncut uh, bottling, which maybe you can see that there. I wrote on it with a Sharpie. Uh, this is the uh, 116 proof, just like the cast strength that we that we make as well on our bourbon. Um, but this is with the California oak oak bill, which is 80% Central Coast Cab barrels and 20% French oak. So really bringing that wine finish into the uh, bourbon realm. And it, it's, a, it's a lovely marriage of flavors that's, Absolutely. you know. I but that. I wanted to taste with you guys today for coming down and seeing me, uh, just a couple projects I'm working on, stuff that people don't really get to try. So awesome. one thing I've talked about in a couple interviews and, and different uh, channels and stuff is that I've got this sort of a love, we were talking earlier about light whiskey. So, I've got a 2007, 12 year old light whiskey finished with Calvados barrels or Calvados, however yeah, you want to say it. That's um, apple brandy, by the way. Apple brandy. So I'm gonna give you a sample. <laughs> this was uh, this is 130 proof. Oh yeah. So give you guys some. Just smell that. I mean, I feel like I've almost turned this predominantly corn whiskey into apple brandy. So. 
this is kind of an example of how oak can overtake or overrule a lot of the flavor components of you know the oak bill to me is as important as the mash bill oh it's this percent weed or that percent weed or makes a big you know stick a few staves of yeah. calvados uh, barrels right. in there it, it gives it a whole sweet component the color on this from what it started as to where it ended up i mean look at this is um this no, is a, that's, that's, that's a 12 year uh, this is sorry. This is a 2014, so this is seven years younger. Okay. This is a five year. Yeah. This uh, this was a 2019 dump. So 2014 to 19, five year old. Uh, this is only six days with Calvados barrels. Six days. Damn. It's, it's wow. three times as dark. Light whiskey yeah. is actually pretty light in color, wow. even at the 12 year mark. Right. So you shouldn't have told us it was 130 because if you would have asked us guess after we tasted it what we thought. Five. This five, is four, <laughs> I'll put it no in about 100, 110. That's really unique, dude. They got that fruity, amazing. This probably tastes more like those Armagnacs you were talking about earlier yeah. than, a, than a corn whiskey or a bourbon or anything like that. And light whiskey, you know, it is basically almost distilled to a neutral grain proof. Okay. So it comes off the still. Bourbon can only come off at 160 proof off the of still. But light whiskey can come off all the way up to 195, basically straight ethanol. But you can put it in the barrel with that proof as well. Generally, they're second fill barrels. So light whiskey, a little history. Light whiskey uh, was developed in the late 60s um, as a response to the influx of gin and vodka from Europe. And so whiskey makers were starting to hurt all this have to use a new barrel, all this bourbon process they were doing, aging it for years and years and years. It was killing them. So what they did is they took basically more yield, so come off the still at a higher proof, more alcohol to water down, more yield, use barrels, so reuse barrels basically, and do all of that, get it to a younger age, don't go for straight whiskey classifications, etc., and then put it out at 40% or even less and call it slight whiskey. Sorry, 40% is the lowest, but you put it out at that proof and you've got this basically, it is whiskey makers vodka essentially in that point. It follows some of the, the rules of, and regulations of whiskey, whiskey yeast, you know, whiskey grains, all that, and it's still whiskey, but you know, it starts it's with like barrel aged vodka. Yeah, it's basically like a barrel aged vodka, but <clears throat> when you leave it in that barrel for 12 years, it starts to really evolve from what may have been a vodka and you put it out. I like it because it's still very receptive to the flavors of a second barrel of, a, of an oak. So I want you to try it with ruby port as well. So I was showing you guys outside the ruby port barrels. I mean, they're basically bleeding with wine. I mean, they're like, yeah. they're coming out of them, right? There's still wine sitting at the bottom. It was a small puddle, but there yeah. was still some in there. Now we made this next day from when we received the barrel. So the barrels were like a little bit on the wet side. This stuff is, if you look at the color, it's almost red. I mean, it's it's really, it almost looks like red wine, yeah. So, now this is a 2014. I'll let you guys try a 2007 next. So you can taste the difference of the 12 year versus the uh, five year in the barrel. Let's see what that does. What's the proof on This is the same base as the... 134.5 proof. 134. <laughs> Yeah, the, o, the 07s are 130 and the uh, 14s, 2014s are 135, give or take. That is super sweet. Very sweet, you know, it's yeah. almost, um, it is dessert-like in a way. Absolutely. Yeah, that would be a good like after dinner dessert whiskey for sure. That's I'm going to try it and then add a little waffle. It's unique as hell, dude. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> I mean, Super I like this one better yeah. than Calvados, but I think so. It's good. Oh, it's really man. sweet. Still wouldn't assume there was a hundred. No, no, no way. <laughs> I wouldn't have assumed it was yeah. whiskey. No. This tastes like yeah, something it's different. Like something totally different. That's that's kind of what I go for. Yeah, yeah. Like if you look at the Mizunara, mm -hmm. the Isle of Pete, and the Amontillado, those ones are exploration into blending right. plus oak. Yeah. And so very few brands have done that, uh, where they're gonna blend something and then finish it. Uh, and blend different kinds of whiskey from different places. So this one uses MGP and Kentucky bourbon. Right. Uh, sorry, Kentucky corn whiskey, I should say. Uh, but, you know, it's four-year-old and five-year-old all blended together, and you get this really nice um, flavor, but it's still 
impressionable. So when you add that mizunara, it leaves a lasting sort of apple-like, pear-like flavor to it. Absolutely. You know, the Isle of Peak, which is the youngest of them, this is one-year-old uh, wheat whiskey, predominantly, as well as some one-year-old single malt. Couldn't get uh, the peated barrels to really impart good flavor on a corn whiskey. So we used wheat and single malt and it worked. Yeah, it worked and, well. And guys, like, I'm not a scotch guy at all. I, Seth sent us a sample of this before, and and I didn't. I was afraid to taste it because I didn't think I was the right the right one to taste it. But it was it was pretty awesome. It's really like really light, not too uh, not too peaty. So you might be a fan. I would give it a try if uh, if you have a, if you have an aversion to uh, peat, it's probably worth uh, worth trying. That'll that'll yeah, sure. that'll get a person into the peat world yeah. in a very you know approachable Easy, way. Exactly. You know, my Amontillado one, the cask of Amontillado, is really fun because it does use the same 12-year 2007 light whiskey from MGP. Okay. So I want you guys to try this one now. This is a 12-year with Ruby Port. Um, again, five days with Ruby Port. And you five can see days. the color, yeah, five days. That's crazy. This is 130 proof. How big are your tanks that you're blending this in? Um, they're at two to 3,000 liters which is about you know every thousand liters is about five barrels okay uh 200 liter barrels 53 gallon so yeah so this one just a little bit more a little bit more uh i would say depth and a thickness to it oh, because of the 12 year yeah for sure changes on that definitely you're gonna smell a little bit more oak it's a much better nose too but I like, I mean, I sincerely like the 14, but the, the 07 is really good. That's delicious. They're all delicious. The color's also really Yeah, the color's amazing. It's not as red, it's more of a deeper brown. This one is a lot more balanced. Oh, yes. Yeah. Fuck this. It's good. It's really good. I haven't had this in a while. What's the proof on this one? 130. I'm going to have a little more. It's really good. <laughs> I haven't tried this in a while. So, is this one you're planning on? Uh, yeah, so what we're going to do, this one's going to be called the Illuminist, uh, which is, you know, a group of people made up of heretics, heresy okay. rye. Okay. It's light whiskey, illuminate, yeah. shine light on. So I'm trying to illuminate the, uh, the category of light whiskey in a way, and really, if that does well, well received, which, you know, I haven't picked what barrel we're going to finish it with, just some of the ones I've been working on. I do have some aging with other barrels. Uh, I'd like to find the right oak bill for this. Not do it as a single oak, like these ones, but as an oak bill with multiple oaks. Right. And then launch that, but also have that come out in a, in the 12 year, like limited edition, but also then come out with a four and five year old blend every day. That's cool. Light whiskey. Yeah, yeah. that's awesome. That would also be, so, I feel like it would be kind of crazy to make a crazy cocktail like that. Yeah. Oh yes. Right? Yeah, and so I want the, I want people to gonna, know. Is, is the proof going to be crazy? Like the light know? whiskey would be like 100 proof at 100 least, proof. yeah. Cool. And then the Illuminous would be like 130, yeah. Okay, yeah. 130. Full cast strength. Yeah, the whole point about yeah. getting. I mean, I kind of. This to me starts to bring like some of the flavors you get from the barrel projects over at Copper and King. Okay. So if you yeah. ever been to Louisville, you go to Copper and King, they're doing, you know, brandy, whether it's apple brandy or. Um, another varietal like grape brandy they're doing them with uh you know uh tequila barrels whiskey barrels rum barrels and each one is i mean i have a little bit of all of them in my office but they're fantastic fantastic brandies and they're each you know each one is so different from the next and i kind of want to be in that playing in that realm and doing that kind of a project yeah. where you can really see the effects of these barrels they're not so mass market with that stuff. A lot of it you have to go there to find. I tried the apple brandy, it's pretty, yeah. pretty great. Yeah, I busted it out for Christmas. And yeah. Like a te their tequila barrel is really good, and their South African uh, wine barrel, okay. the geographies, is Sounds really, good. really good. Awesome. So the Illuminous is supposed to be something. I mean, this I will come out with this this year. Right. And I have a. You know, we buy a bottle. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. So far, <laughs> these will be these will be very limited distribution. We're probably not going to do what we did before with the single oak, where we went really far, really wide, and really deep into each market. We yeah. do distribute to about thirty-five states, okay. and these went into about thirty of them. Uh, you know, some states did really well with it. Some states are still, you know, 
they're not really, they don't understand it. Not everyone understands yeah. and has the time to explain blending and this and that. I mean, there's a ton of information in here about like what these are, the mash bill, the oak bill, the differences. So we want to go to where this did really well and give those markets yeah. like California or Nevada, you know, people that have a place that they're going to be able to move this stuff Absolutely. and reward them with the Illuminist and then also have it here in our tasting room when we open to the public. That would be cool. When do you guys is, actually tell us about that? <laughs> this place. I'm I can't I can't say when it's going to open because I don't know. Okay. Only the state of California and Got the state it. government right. knows that because they're you're holding on to my paperwork yes. and they're <laughs> going through it, right? But it's in the works. Um, but yeah, we're becoming a uh, craft distillery here in California. So we will be doing all of our barrel projects, like single barrel stuff here. So hopefully around 20 to 30 barrels at a time that will bring in age. You might even be like having a cocktail right next to one of them and that'll be aging the next whiskey for the next run. But yeah, that's the idea is basically do about 30 barrels or so here in uh, LA, downtown LA, and then the rest of it will be done in Owensboro. So, and generally that's just gonna be for the single the single barrel stuff. All the main, like the California oaks, that's all gonna be done in Owensboro. Okay, cool. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. you guys will see this video later. Uh, I'll do a little shot yeah. of this whole place. It's, it's pretty crazy in here. He's got a whole tasting. Beautiful with a nice little brick and a little research barrels over back here. there. Yeah, we've got a 3,000 square foot tasting room. Um, we do, we're doing weddings here. We're doing, um, I don't know what, uh, birthday parties. You know, youth so gatherings, all this kind of stuff. You know, yeah. baby, we're doing a baby shower. <laughs> <laughs> so if you like bourbon, babies, yeah. that's it. So like, yeah, yeah. This is, there's no better spot than a baby shower than here at a bar. That's awesome. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, no, it's great. So, what do you guys think of these uh, special projects? I love it, man. Yeah, very, very, very special. one. And the last one we had. You like the last one? Yeah, the 07. This, this one. Yeah, the Illuminous. That the one. Illuminous, yeah. All right, well, awesome. maybe we'll, we'll end on like one more California cast strength before that goes away forever. <laughs> well, thank you so much yeah. for having us, man. I appreciate Cheers, you. guys. Yeah. Again, guys, Cheers. check out, uh, if you're in LA, when this place opens, you're definitely gonna wanna check it out. It's a pretty, yep. pretty awesome spot. And uh, anyway, thanks again, Seth. Appreciate of course. It. Cheers. All right. Cheers, everyone. Cheers.